that's one thing that we must come to. I wasn't aware, I knew that you'd uh, arranged Let It Be Me and The Wonder of You. As it turns out, you arranged 38 songs. Uh, we don't know what they all are, we probably all, maybe, maybe you've forgotten them, but uh, yeah, you, you, who came to you about the idea of that? Because obviously the orchestra leader was Bobby Morris at the time, Joe Gershow later on, and uh, so he would be obviously in charge of the orchestra, but they obviously knew that you could do this, so you were the first person that just said, hey, how, what about you doing this? Well, what I did was uh, we were doing, uh, one afternoon we were doing an orchestra, Rehearsal. This is before the engagement began. We'd always meet up there the week before and uh, rehearse the orchestra. Um, and uh, so we were having orchestra rehearsal, and and at one point the orchestra took a break, and uh, Elvis came over and said, "I'm closer to us, the rhythm section, DCB band." And and he started singing, "Let It Be Me." And we all kind of knew it because the Everly Brothers had a huge hit, and um, I think that old song's been around a hundred years or more. Anyway, um, then uh, very soon the orchestra came back from their break, and uh, and they always got back on this microphone, and he just said, uh, "We'll work on that tomorrow," because he said, "I really think I want to do that in our show." So. Okay, and I see an opening there. <laughs> and um, uh, as soon as that rehearsal was over, I had brought all of my equipment with me. Now the equipment for an arranger is a large score pad and a whole bunch of pencils and something to sharpen them with. So I just went upstairs and uh, arranged it for him and called a, a copyist and took care of the whole thing, made sure the music was on the stand the very next day at our orchestra rehearsal. And I told, there was a security guard by a door right there by the stage, and I told him, I said, when, when you see Elvis get off that service elevator and come this way, when he gets about 15 feet from the door, down right there, please step in here and tell me that he is here. And the guy did that for me. And uh, I wrote the, the melody in the intro so he would know what song we were playing. And um, when he was at that magic spot, I kicked off the orchestra when the guy gave me the, the, the signal. And uh, it was stepped up on stage and as he walked by to his microphone, I handed him his lyric sheet this pleased the king. <laughs> uh, and that was it, you know. Uh, uh, he did recognize, I want him to know that I can do these things, I can have it for him. Hey, mention a song today, you can hear it play tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I had a little saying, um, Glenn Harden, charts and parts. Um, <laughs> We made those, but never close. <laughs> anyway, that's how that all got started. And uh, it sure was easy, and all of a sudden he wanted every, every song in the world arranged, which suited me just fine. I remember he just simply said, uh, do you remember that old song, uh, The Wonder of You? And I said, oh yeah. Because that was a number one by Ray Peterson, you know, a very big record. He said, oh yeah, we gotta do that. So, anyway. I could go upstairs and write these things in a few hours. And uh, some people might think it would be difficult to work in a hotel room, but it isn't. All you need is a little table like this and with a light over it and uh, a glass full of sharp pencils. And you don't need to answer the phone in the middle of the night. You don't need to walk your dog or anything. So you get your concentration level sky high. And, uh, did, uh, did you get paid for all of your arrangements? Yes. Did the girl know that? No, I, I, I put in a bill. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems to me you got along with Elvis and the, the other guys pretty well straight away. You know, you, everything gelled. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it, it was. So, I mean, a song like, say, uh, I don't know, Pog Saladani, 
for instance, did that with the, all, the, all the movements and so on, did that just happen or did Elvis come to everybody and say, this is how I want to do the song? Or did it was just a natural thing for the rehearsal? Uh, he wanted us to play the way we wanted to play. Um, he gave us a lot of freedom. And the funny thing was, for an uneducated uh, in music kind of guy, uh, if there was something he didn't quite like, he could explain it, in, usually in one short sentence. So, so that made it that clear the matter up right away. And, uh, so these things, we'd just pull them together, you know, because we're all session musicians, and that's what you do when you make records. Everybody creates their part you know, right here on the spot, and we'll see if it flies. You know what I mean? It, um, one of the musicians on the very first season that you did is, I don't know whether there's anybody aware of the Bob Lanning, do you know Bob Lanning? Right, okay, he was, was the drummer. Now, when you did your first season, it wasn't Ronnie that was playing, it was Bob Lanning, and he just did that one, and he's the guy who's on The Wonder of You, Punk Salad, and all the, the on-stage stuff. So, have you, you've never seen him maybe since, you know, how did, was, it work, was, was it to work with him? Because he was a good, solid drummer, different to Ronnie. Yeah, uh, he was okay. Uh, I didn't. I never got to know him very well, but uh, yeah, he was a nice guy. But I haven't seen him since. So I know he does some work, or has done some work in uh, Europe and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do believe his mother is a famous opera singer. Uh, uh, Robert, Robert, Roberta Sherwood. Sherwood. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's right. Yeah, thank you. It's all coming out, folks. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So then from Vegas, you went to Houston Astrodome, about 44,000 people, and uh, just you and the guys and the singers, no, no orchestra on that one. How was that to play outdoors when outdoor shows weren't that uh, great sound wise? Well, I actually know there was a roof on that. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. But it was kind of terrible because it felt like uh, you just felt like you were out in the middle of a football field. I think it was even bigger than that, really. And uh, you, you felt like you were the only person there because you could hardly even hear the audience reaction, you know, the yeah. time delay, you know, it's a very strange experience. Yeah. But I think we did it twice. I think we did it more than once. 74 as well, yeah. 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 It's, uh, how was it like working in Vegas and uh, two shows a night? Did you find that really, really tiring after a while or maybe even a little bit boring after a while? I was very young. I was uh, <laughs> I was thirty years old, and uh, uh, so it was no problem for me at all. I could stay up for about a week, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I'm eighty years old now. So that's, uh, oh, uh, yeah. you're, you're looking good on it, mate. Thanks, pal. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you ever go up to Elvis's suite and maybe do a little bit of parting or anything, or was it? Maybe not quite as we think. Oh, no, we'd all go straight to bed at night. <laughs> so, uh, no, we had a party every night. We were always, uh, he, he would tell us very often, uh, you're all welcome, please come up. Yeah, uh, bring your friends. And, and we did. We enjoyed going up there. It was a beautiful suite. It, it was huge up there. And it was just beautiful. There was glass windows all the way around. And, you could see the mountains, and um, he had a bar up there, you know, even though he didn't drink. The hotel made sure the bar was fully stocked. <laughs> <laughs> and so we would enjoy ourselves and bring our friends, and um, he, he was usually sitting right nearby, right, by, right close to the bar. And um, Anyway, we'd watch the sun come up. We'd drink all night and watch the sun come up every morning. It's just beautiful. It was a lot of fun, and everybody in town wanted to be up there where the party was. You know. Did you get along okay with Elvis's friends? Did you see that much of them? The Memphis Mafia, those tough guys. The yeah, they were always around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So right here, we're moving right through the seventies now. Madison Square Garden, most one of the most important concerts he did for obviously in seventy two. How did that feel? Was that a, a nervous thing for him or, or you guys? Oh, he was always really nervous at the beginning, but he'd snap out of it as soon as the audience applauds uh, at the beginning of the show. Uh, it was pretty easy. It's a, it's a good place to play. The sound was real good, as I remember. And uh, I was sitting in a very good place because I could hear him real well. 
and I thought he never sang better, so I enjoyed myself a lot. I think they kind of <coughs> ruined it on the mix, and I, I do believe the Colonel uh, got in on it and speeded it up a little bit. Yeah, that's, I believe so. Yeah, and anyway, I couldn't believe it. I heard that. Yeah, right. it sounded terrible. Yeah, did that was make any comments? Did he? Was there any comments in the studio because uh, about the recordings and things like that, or did Elvis ever make any comments to you about? Well, I'm not happy with this record, or like, well, now that I've heard it, it's finished, or any of that type of thing. Oh, I don't remember him complaining about it very much. Uh, he trusted the, his producer, a guy named Felton Jarvis, and uh, he was pretty easy to please, really. Um, it was very easy to please. Uh, he did uh, make sure he kept the colonel out of our business. He didn't want him. Uh, to have anything to do with what we do. He made sure of that. As a matter of fact, he made, we all made separate individual deals with Elvis, individually. Right. Made yeah. our own deals with Elvis, and that was firm, and uh, he wanted to keep the colonel out of that business. When the colonel found out how much money he was paying us, <laughs> he uh, hit the ceiling. He, he, he'd come up and stay a little while at the party, but he'd usually be gone by, by the time the water got hot, so. <laughs> but anyway, one night, he actually said right in front of us, he had just found out about how much Elvis was paying us, and he said, you know, Elvis, I could put a bunch of chimpanzees behind you and we'd sell just as many tickets. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> so, we didn't have to deal with him at all, and uh, we were pleased about that, you know. Uh, I was with Elvis for six years, and in that six years, the Colonel spoke to me twice. And both times, he said, hi, boy, how are you, boy? <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a door from the casino and a long hallway to backstage. And one night I stepped in this door here, going that way, and the colonel opened that door, coming this way. And I thought, I'm not going to speak to this guy. You know, he's a jerk. I don't, <laughs> I don't have to deal with him at all. So I just kept right on walking. It. But as he walked by, this was the first time he ever spoke to me. As he walked by, he just, as he passed me, he said, hi, boy. How are you, boy? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Crossed him off my list. <laughs> hey, so we were just mentioning songwriting. Were you still writing then? Did you ever think, or was it mentioned that maybe you might write one for Elvis, or did it just? Um, it never came up. If I had something, I certainly would have sprung it on him because uh, I had plenty of opportunities. But no, I, I never did. Uh, I guess I. Just couldn't come up with it. I don't think I even tried. I, you know, sometimes your plate is full and you got more to do than you can get around to, and um, you can't do everything. Yes, exactly. So, so then obviously we move on to the Aloha show. The Aloha show, a very, very nervous show uh, for Elvis. And once again, you, you guys obviously you, you're such great musicians, but did you feel? Sort of nervous about that, or was it just that we're just going to treat this like another gig? Well, you know, uh, we did know that it was going to go out live to the Far East, and uh, I think we knew how many viewers they expected to have. But you know, it was a actually that was a small place. I don't know if any of you have ever seen it or not, that arena uh, or whatever it's called. I don't think it qualifies as an arena, but whatever. Um, uh, it's a small place, and um, they think they made it look big in the pictures. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, to us it just seemed like just another television show, really, because you could see the cameras here and there, and uh, you could see the red light come on, you know, when they were filming. It, it just, I know it sounds silly, but uh, it just seemed like just another TV show. Thank <laughs> you.